When the children, ages 6 to 10, were reported for playing by themselves only two blocks from home. Now, when I was growing up, I used to play at the school playground, which was right, like, less than two blocks from my house. So what, if it had been a park, it would have been bad? It, what, what is it about a park? Freaks hang out at parks. Yeah, freaks would never go to the school ground. The children's mother, Danielle Mitev, uh, was contacted by Montgomery County Child Welfare Service, where I want you to call and complain, and told that she had violated the law by essentially endangering a child under the age of eight. According to CPS Nazis, the young child had been confined in a dwelling, house, enclosure, or motor vehicle without a guardian present. Surprisingly, the CPS employee supervisors, superiors, excuse me, found the charge to be inaccurate and unwarranted, resulting in the case being dropped. Yeah, because it wasn't in a dwelling, building, enclosure, or motor vehicle, mainly. I know, I could just read. I must be brilliant. Thinking the pair were free to continue playing outside. God, no, kids cannot play outside. This is America. The children's father was shocked when answering a knock on the family's door last Saturday. Speaking with Arizon.com, Mitiv explained her husband's encounter in detail. It seemed that we had called their bluff and that they were going to leave us alone, and not for long, she said. This past Saturday, while I was out of town, my husband dropped my kids off at the park about one mile from our house and said that they could walk home together. They got halfway when someone called the police. Wait, you walk, kids walking down the street? I mean, literally, I have no idea what color these people are, and I don't care. But you mean to tell me? that we have reached a level in this society where kids merely walking down the street are considered reasons to call the cops. Meanwhile, we preach at the little kids if they play their video game too much and they get fat. What the hell do you want them to do? So the female police officer arrived at the family's home shortly after and immediately requested the father's ID, threatening to call backup if he failed to retrieve it. As the father headed upstairs to grab his identification, the police officer reportedly threatened to shoot him if he came back with anything else. Well, hell, ain't that nice. He said he would get his ID and went to go upstairs, Mateev explained. She said in front of the kids that if he came down with anything else, that shots would be fired. So the kids were not traumatized in the park by anyone. They were not traumatized walking home by anyone. They were traumatized by the cop. Mateev says she learned of the incident after receiving a call from her 10-year-old who was in tears over the officer's comments. It was the cop that terrorized the kid. At this point, my 10-year-old calling me crying, saying the police were there and that daddy was going to be arrested, she said. My husband stepped outside to continue the conversation away from the kids. When he disagreed with one of the officers about the dangers that walking alone posed to the kids, she actually asked him, don't you watch TV? The answer was no. She took notes and laughed. Uh, less than two hours later, the father heard another knock at the door, this time from an employee of the Montgomery County Child Welfare Service, Sig Heil. The CPS agent asked the father to sign a temporary plan which stated that the children could not be left unsupervised until another CPS employee contacted them the following day. Then they would likely be put into the Hitler Youth, I imagine. Initially refusing to sign, the father eventually caved after the CPS employee called the police and threatened to take the children. Unlawfully, I might add. While the police and CPS claim that the children are too young to play on their own, Matisse says that her kids are safe and are learning to be responsible. This is outrageous. We refuse to deprive our children of critical opportunities to develop responsibility and independence. You cannot be responsible and independent in the U.S. What's wrong with you? And they have no intention, she says, of fundamentally changing our parenting to accommodate this kind of paranoia and bullying. You're in America. Our government is allowed to make uh, you bullied. That's what, what they do. They live for it. We're now waiting for a call from Child Welfare, Sieg Heil and looking for someone who can give us legal advice on these issues in Maryland. Friends, there is the dumdy of the day. Please call and let them know you heard about it here. And friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. That's it. Sam I.B. signing off, wishing you a Merry Christmas. I'll be out of this funky, crabby mood tomorrow. It's all good news tomorrow, I promise. Do something great for somebody. Why? Just because it's something great. Because it's not happening out there. Everything's how much was the gift or I don't care about Christmas. And I like to think that there's a little bit more to life than that. 
Also, as I close out here, make sure I need two more people to donate to uh, Save Olivia. Look at my last video. It's dated, uh, I think, the 22nd. Uh, I don't know. Look up Olivia, Facebook, Save Olivia. I need two more people to prove that they donated to her in my comment line on Facebook or on the comment line for this video or that one. If you do, I ice bucket myself on Christmas Day wearing nothing but shoes and shorts. Um, if seven more of you do it, I needed a total of ten, the singer of Passing Time, uh, Serenity, will be in a bikini doing it as well. Friends, good night, God bless, and Merry Christmas. I'll see you tomorrow.